Right, welcome back. Let's continue with modeling our turn legs for furniture. In this video, I want to go ahead and show you another way that you can model these legs. And it's going to be a bit different from the rest of the ones that we did so far. So I can go ahead and try to either model this one, the one I'm showing you on the top right uh, end, or this one. They're basically the same way of modeling. So let's go ahead with this one because I think this is going to be a bit more uh, complex seeing as how the um, edges are going to be rounder. So it was it's going to be interesting to see how to model this. So like with all turned objects, I'm going to try and outline the profile. So quickly just go over it. Nothing too fancy. Don't need to stress about if I get this correctly or not because as soon as we're done, all right, something like this, like this. As soon as we're done with this, we're simply gonna go inwards like this, now convert everything like so. Select the vertex, control A to select all the vertices, right click, Bezier corner, and now simply move the Bezier corners Around. So if these are locked, like I said, F8 to unlock it. And there we go. Now we can move them into position to get the shape that we want from this. All right. Make it closely. This is going to work. Move this on the side. Same here. All right. The way that I usually work is I like to have as fewer polygons as possible. That is going to help me get the shape that I want. Because one of the old rules is if it doesn't add to the model, it basically takes away. So if you can do something with fewer polygons, always try to do it that way because that, that is going to help you have better control over what you are modeling. So with this, let's... I think it's close enough to get the shape. So again, I should have added one more line to the end, but let's just go ahead and create one line. So from here to here. Now make sure that these here are welded together because it's going to create a problem if it's not. All right. Select both of them and weld. All right, now they're both one same line. All right, again, we're gonna go over in the modifier list, choose the lathe modifier, put on a minimum alignment, and we should get something like this. All right, so I'm gonna move it on the side and try to calculate just a bit to see how many of these ridges we have. So we have one, two, three, four, four on the other side, eight, and one space in between them. So that means we have 16 sided. Better. <laughs> so we actually started off with 16, which is what we need. All right, so let's drop an edit poly on top of this. And let's see what we can do here. First of all, I want to delete the top portion and the lower portions. So select delete, select, whoops. Okay, we're gonna have to go in and manually select all the vertices, delete. Awesome, no more. Okay, so for now, if I drop in a turbo smooth, it should give me a nice result like this. So this is more or less like what we have here. The only thing that's missing is these inner parts. Now, in the previous videos, uh, when we made this part, we actually modeled in these individually, and then we just simply arrayed it around. In this case, I wanna take a different approach, 
and instead of using the array and just modeling one of these parts, which is again, very viable option, I wanna show you another way of doing this. And that would be by using one of the compound objects, ProBoolean. So in order to use ProBoolean, first we have to prep our model for that kind of a use. And the way to do this would be I need to extract a few lines and those lines are going to define where those ridges are going to be. So again, with the Swift loop, I'm going to add one line. And in this case, I'm going to hold down shift while I'm uh, putting down the outline for the Swift loop. In that case, it's going to try to follow the curvature. So it's not going to add any uh, additional edges that are going to mess up our edge flow. So hold down shift like, oh, in this case, no, I'm simply going to take this edge, turn on edge constraint. This means that when I'm moving this edge upwards and downwards, it's not going to change the shape of or the volume of our model. I could have done the same here. So matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and delete that the one that we added and just move this upwards a tiny bit. So something like this. All right. So what we want to do here is quite simple. We just want to select these, this line over here, then skip one, select one. All right, let's go in. skip one, select one. make sure you don't select anything on the back uh, face so and also once you're done with the constraint turn them off because sometimes they can do some nasty things on your geometry so turn it off make sure you click these so again Okay, so we are left with this result so far for our modeling. So let's see how we can take this and make it into what we want. With the selection we have here, I'm gonna go ahead and create, or actually click this button next to the create shape. So the settings, so in here, I'm gonna click on linear, leave it on linear. I don't need it to be smooth and just call it anything, GX, whatever. So what this does, it actually, it makes, here, here we go, it makes lines from our selection. So we have splines. One of the great things about using splines for, ge uh, for your modeling is that you can actually create geometry from lines fairly easy. All you have to do is drop down to rendering and click in enabling in render and enabling viewport option. Now, when you do this, you're going to have an uh, option to basically control how thick those lines are going to be. If I jump into the viewport, I can control exactly how thick I want them to be. This is about okay. So click on five to round up like this. And with this in turn, we can simply go ahead and click on edit poly. This is going to co convert our lot or our lines or splines into geometry. One thing though, you have to be wary is when you're using uh, splines to make geometry, every time on one of the poles or one of the sides, you're going to get something like this. You see these two, two edges that appear? Those are basically what happens when you have an end gun on the sides and Max really doesn't know how to deal with it. So it simply drops in that silly looking polygon. So you have to just select all of them, all of the bottom ones, grow the selection, whoops, grow the selection, deselect these top portions and delete. Now we can simply go ahead Select all of them or 
we'll just let's see if one and then let's see about collapsing this and see how or what kind of a result we're gonna get. So cap collapse and if we put on a turbo smooth on top of it, we should get a more circular. Whoops. Alright, let's delete this. Alright. Don't like that result. So we're gonna go backwards. And I'll try to do this on all of them at the same time. So scale it inwards. Now, hold down, and what I want to do here is I want to cap these. But if I put a just a, if I put a simple cap like this, when I drop in a turbo smooth, we're gonna get a result like this, which is not so bad because we're gonna use this as a base to extrude from. But all right, for now let's leave it like this and we'll see what kind of a result we get so again the same thing with the top although since i didn't have to i don't have to fix uh, this geometry i can simply drop in a bevel modifier upwards like this inwards and turbo smooth let's see how this thing is going to work well, it might work. We'll see. So, for now, I want to go ahead and drop in a turbo smooth on top of this to get this kind of a result. And now, here's the important part. Before you do this thing that I'm about to do, make sure that you have finished with modeling all the details that you want to add. Because once I do this, I will not be able to go back to doing the edit poly and that might suck for some cases so i'm going to go over to the control or the create panel in the geometry go down to scroll down to compound objects and from here choose pro boolean with pro boolean make sure you have subtraction turned on and then click start picking and you start picking these guys now <laughs> since here we have this problem because all these are one and for some reason it didn't subtract them it made them into a merge or a union so let's try one more time and <laughs> actually before we do this here's another good pointer that I should mention is that when you're modeling something like this and you want to go ahead and pro boolean it make sure that your normals are facing the right way as you can see if i select them uh, right now they're all facing the wrong way so just flip it so now they're facing the correct way i think i mentioned this while i was modeling the other models but here we kind of forgot but it's okay it's not a big deal and it's easily fixable so again pro boolean make sure you have subtraction on start picking and select the lines and right away, we can see that by doing this, we actually got this kind of a result. We have the lines flowing with the geometry. Now, the tricky thing with using um, Pro Boolean for something like this is when you go into Edit Poly and you deselect, you can see that you get some edgy, uh, edges on, or sharp edges here, which might be what you want. And on the top, you have these little lines that are not very visible but they happen so let's see how we can deal with some of this first thing is when you use pro boolean and you turn on the edge it's going to auto automatically select all the edges that it made which can make your job a bit easier so we can try and get this very very tiny amount of a chamfer in this and see if that's going to help with smoothing out those edges a bit yeah actually it did 
and for this issue so just we don't end up with having this smoothing issue we can go ahead and simply with the edge drop in an extra edge but for a reason it doesn't the edge flow or the swift loops doesn't work when you have uh, interrupted edges so we're gonna have to go ahead and manually select this entire portion and now drop in a connect make sure it's all right put it like this and now with the edge constraint on simply move it downwards that way it's not going to be deformed so this should help a bit with the issue of smoothing on this part there you go it's very constrained now to uh, the top portion here and the new edge that we made so if you're not having your render come this close and simply just render out this pose it's really really hard uh, for anybody to notice it so with this we ended up with our model looking like this we can go ahead drop in the top portion from the modular element we did previously and we can get this result happening on the entire model so we can use this same exact technique to model out this model here but i really don't think that you would uh, have to watch me go over outlining this entire model again then doing the same thing i did here to get these ridges as i think it was fairly simple and i'm pretty sure you, you guys can do it on your own so let's give this again a nice gray color a black outline and i'll see you guys in the next video we're gonna where we're going to try and tackle a few more of the issues that can arise when you're modeling something like this.